Okay, hey music makers out there, James Russell here, and today I'm going to give you five ways to instantly improve your music using EQ. So let's roll the tape. Okay, so one of the biggest tools that we've got in our arsenal when it comes to being a music producer or a mix engineer or whatever we're doing is EQ. EQ, as hopefully you guys know, uh, comes in many different forms, paragraphic, um, parametric, um, many different types of EQ, whether it be emulations or whatever, but essentially they all do the same thing. They either boost or cut a frequency and most of them work with bands and the like and also have what's called a Q or how much you can notch it. I love EQ, it's one of the great tools in the arsenal of a mix engineer. It can be really fun to use and there's a couple of little techniques that everyone should know that can certainly help your mixing. And this also applies to music creation. EQ can also be something that you can use creatively. The first tip that I've got for you is learn how to sweep. Now it doesn't matter how long I've been mixing for, every single session, every single mix, I will always sweep at least one thing. Generally I'll sweep a whole lot of things. Now what a sweep means is essentially you're going to boost the frequency, run along the frequency bands, trying to find the particular frequency that you want to pull out or boost. Now I use what's called a, a bigger Q or I use what's called a fat Q to do that generally because I find that if you use a thin Q or a really, a really high Q as they call it which means that the, your frequency curve is really really spiky I find you get this kind of squelching sound and it, it can sometimes mask, mask the frequency that you're looking for so I use a, a slightly bigger Q, find the frequency range that I'm looking for get a rough idea and start pulling it out or boosting it Number two is filtering now filtering is super important and it's also another thing that will get used on every single mix session. Now filtering there's two kinds, there's high pass and there's low pass. Now this can be confusing because essentially if you're dealing with low frequencies you're going to do a high pass filter. If you're dealing with high frequencies you're going to do a low pass filter. So it's kind of the opposite to what they're implying but it essentially means that you're letting all the high frequencies pass and getting rid of the low ones on the low end and you're letting all the low frequencies pass with the high end and getting rid of the high ones. Now high pass filtering should happen on every mix that you're doing because it doesn't matter whether it's a recorded instrument or a virtual instrument, all of them have low end frequencies there that you're not necessarily going to need in the mix and you also need to deal with those. Low end frequencies mean that you can have a lot of rumble down below, uh, it means that your compressors can trigger early, uh, low end frequencies will play havoc with your mix and you need to learn how to use low end frequencies and learn how to manage them. On everything you're recording you should at least have some form of high pass filtering. Now, a lot of people like to add as a default, go all the way up to 50 hertz or 70 even um, on just about everything. I sometimes go down to 20 if it's a bass instrument and I want to keep some of that low end down there. You should definitely filter just about everything that's coming in or it should be filtered at least some stage of, of the processing. So learning how to high pass filter is super important. Low pass filtering is also good if you want to try and manage the top end, but high pass filtering is super imperative and should be done on just about any instrument that's got full frequency. Number three is notching. Now notching is essentially getting the frequency once you've found out what it is and pulling out that exact frequency using a high Q and essentially attenuating that frequency. There's a golden rule here that if you're going to boost a frequency you use a wide Q and if you're going to attenuate or subtract a frequency you use a high Q. If you're going to pull out a frequency you want to get that exact frequency so you're only doing little bits to pull out what you don't need. So if you boost something and you want it to sound natural, you need to use a bigger bandwidth to do that because if you just boost that one frequency, as I said, you can get squelching, you can get a whole lot of artifacts that you don't necessarily want. So the general rule, it doesn't happen all the time, is that if you're going to boost, you use a wide Q, and if you're going to subtract, you use a tight Q. Okay, now number four. This is happening with modern mixes more and more, but sometimes people go overboard with this. It's called adding air. Now, adding air can be really, really, really powerful, especially with things like vocals and the like. And I would suggest don't add air to everything. But adding air is essentially adding a high shelf or a boost over about 10K. Right In that higher range, it's harder to be audible. It can sometimes make your mixes sound brittle if you do too much of it. But my little rule of thumb, and it's a little trick, is I'll low pass some other instruments. So say I'm doing a vocal and I'm going to add 12K to vocal, just add a bit of air there. 
essentially what I'll do, especially with things like guitars and stuff, I'll do some low pass filtering. So there's not a whole lot of information in there, which means that whatever you're actually adding a bit of air to is way more distinguishable and way more noticeable. So don't go too much, too nuts with adding air, but Adding air can be certainly a powerful thing and happens a lot in modern mixes. Generally, especially with things like vocals or guitars or anything, or especially acoustic or anything like that, just be careful not to do it to too many elements because adding air can also mean you get a whole lot of frequencies up there and your mix can sound brittle. Okay, now here's the other one. Adding warmth. Now, a lot of people don't know what warmth is. Warmth is adding low frequencies, essentially anything under about 500 hertz. Um, warmth can be amazing. You can add a lot of fatness and warmth to something and there's a famous frequency setting or there's a famous EQ setting called a scoop which is essentially adding warmth and you're adding air um, and it just they call it a smile and essentially you're boosting a high shelf and you're boosting a low shelf which means that you're adding something to the bottom and top of the mix. Now that's great because it's a very sort of hi-fi sound. A lot of hi-fi stereos actually have that happening. Adding warmth and air can be fantastic, but I would caution you in adding warmth. That's one way to introduce or accentuate any rumble you've got. So make sure you've definitely high pass filtered things first, so you're not accentuating any rumble. But also don't go too nuts with adding warmth. Uh, you should only need to do it to a few little elements. Once again, these are things that are used tastefully and not overall, although some people do add warmth to a mix. Um, there's other ways to do it harmonically. I would su suggest adding second or third harmonics, which we'll go into in another episode. But essentially adding warmth is adding some low end and it does exactly what it says there, adds warmth and makes the bass elements pop out a little bit more. So there's a quick rundown, five little techniques that can instantly improve your music using EQ. Uh, so first was learning how to sweep. Learning how to sweep is something you'll definitely master over your time of mixing and it means that you can find the frequency to attenuate it. Number two is learning how to filter. As we said, high pass and low pass filters, it can be confusing, but it's really good to grab, sort the top and bottom of any instrument or any frequency range. Number three is notching, which is how to accurately take out whatever frequency you're looking for, whatever bad frequency, is that if you know how to notch in those areas, you can generally, especially clean up a sound very quickly. Adding air um, was number four, which means adding a bit of brightness, or number five, adding a bit of warmth. I hope that was informative for you guys. Hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment, and I'll catch you next episode.